Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Rayson. I'm a forest gardener and a forest garden designer. And increasingly, I am an activist. <laughs> More of that later. But uh, I do shit, basically. So um, I'm going to try to get some things together. So for those people who don't know what forest gardening is, forest gardening is a way of working with nature to grow edible crops. It's essentially creating an edible ecosystem. So you are, <laughs> yep, you, the, the, the whole idea behind it is that you are not, uh, you've got a minimal amount of effort going in, a maximum amount of output, and you're not having a negative effect on the environment. You're having actually a positive effect on the environment, which is what we need in this time of climate emergency and ecological emergency, which is what we're going through. And uh, if anyone says we're not going through an ecological and climate emergency, I'm just not even going to argue. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to be on the chat quite a lot this morning because I do want quite a bit of uh, feedback. So let me see how many people we got on there. Uh, Abby Sue. Oh, I think it's Annette, or was it Chris? Lynn, Lynn's there. Lynn, good to see you. Haven't seen you for ages. Pam's on, and Lecture Reflux. Mm, don't know who that is. And Pan Patrano Visinka. So greetings to you, to you both, and Pete and Abby. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is going to be... Oh, there's another one. Uh, Angie, Angie's there as well. Hi, Angie. So, uh, let me go on to the chat. Yep, any kind of questions? Okay, I don't get that. I don't understand. It's Annette. Hello, Annette. Right. Um, so, today... What I wanted to do was to talk about the different campaign, not campaigns, the different projects that I'm involved in uh, to make forest gardening more accessible. So I've talked about this a fair bit before. Uh, the first, the first bit, they kind of lead in, lead into each other. So this is the second part. The first part is a spreadsheet. Oh dear, I didn't do that. Never mind. Hold on. Uh, the first part. Let me just. I should have got this ready. My computer crashed this morning. I got all the uh, all the web pages up and running, and then my computer just died. I've got a ten year old laptop, and it just died. So uh, I've just I've just had to start from scratch, and it's just thrown me a little bit. So the first thing that I wanted to show you was this. Oh no, lordy. Okay is the spreadsheet of plants and I've talked about this before this is a spreadsheet of Martin Crawford's let me I can't even see my face now where's my face gone there we go so Martin Crawford has got a book uh, which a seminal book creating a forest garden and it has a load of plants list, listed in there uh, by by different types so canopy layer herbace uh, canopy layer shrub layer herbaceous perennials and ground cover and then it's got annuals, biannuals, and climbers, and that's the way that it's organised. So there's a chap on the Forest Garden on the Forest Garden UK group, I think, called um, Ollie Ollie Boone, who's a permaculture designer, and he said, "Oh, anyone interested in putting together a spreadsheet?" And I've put together a couple of spreadsheets already, so I said, "Yeah, sure, that'd be uh, that'd be good." So he said, "What you do is to take every single book, every single plant out of here, and then match it up with." The plants for a future. Oh, am I gonna? Is this gonna work? Hold on. Uh, yay! Plants for a future. So, the plants for a future is an online database of useful plants, useful to humans. That is, and there's about seven thousand. Oh, you can see seven thousand. I think it's seven and a half thousand different plants on there. So, it's a fantastic uh, resource, and it's online and it's brilliant, but it's quite big. Yeah. Uh, you can buy the data and we, uh, so all these I, I've actually downloaded the database bought it before and you use it for personal use and so Ollie's done the same and he said what we do is to look at all the plants in here and then just get the entry from the plants for a future database and then put them in a spreadsheet so that is precisely what I've done what's what I talked about last week on the last last week's live stream or the week before uh, so we have a whole list and it's all I'm not sure if you can see that it's quite a lot of it there's a lot of information there so it's got the name 
the name of the plant and then a link back to its Plants for a Future reference, the Latin name as an abbreviation, the family, habit, it's got the, then it's got the uses, uh, the uses of the, of, the, of the plant and then which are kind of food based and then others and then it has the growing conditions, the ones in blue, and then it's got the ID, so every plant's got an ID. Now the lovely thing about this is that in that in creating a forest garden book, there is only about 430 plants. What am I gonna get down to the bottom? Whoa, computer says no. So there's there's only 430 odd plants, so that's that's, you know, not that many in the grand scheme of things compared to the 7,000 that are on the Plants for Future website. But the key thing here is that this in, this spreadsheet is sortable, which means you can search for stuff. So I want to search by, you know, oh, the height or anything that is used as a nitrogen fixer or anything that you can eat the root from or a tree a deciduous tree over 20 meters or you know so you can just use you can sort the data so i won't go into that today because it's not really this isn't about that but what this does relate to is the second part of the tools that i would like to get sorted out so this is the first part this i'm afraid this isn't public yet um still getting in touch with plants for future so ollie if you're listening can you get in touch with me we're gonna need to sort it out um but i want to get this public and I hopefully get the approval of plants for future to make this public and then we can we can share it and people can start using it so anyone who's creating a forest garden can then say i'm looking for this type of plant what size is it what the rootstock is what the fruiting tree whether it's a nut tree etc the cool thing is here you probably can't see can i zoom in Oh yes, here we go. Look up there. There's a there's an icon that is a an emoji for a picture. So what I'm going to do is to have a, a link for each of these. And this is the abbreviations column. There will be a link to a forest garden photo gallery. Now this is a photo gallery of every single plant in that list. So you say I want to get, <laughs> I want. I want a, I want a, a, a evergreen cornus, and it's a Bentham's cornel, and uh, yep, you can say oh, this is this is how tall it is, five meters by four meters. Great, sounds great. It's fruiting. It's kind of very ornamental. Love, it, like it. I like it. But what does it look like? And then you can go, you know, you can go to Plants for a Future and you can look at it there and you can go onto the various search engines and look for it there. But I thought it would be a great thing to do would be to have a gallery of all these plants in one place. So that's a project. So that's the kind of project we started off with the Forest Garden, um, the Forest Garden group, the propagation group, the WhatsApp group have got going. And uh, it, start, it didn't start off like that. It just started off, it would be a good, a good thing to have photos of people's gardens and different plants and it was you know quite low-key and kind of building up slowly and different sorting different things out but now uh realize that it can, I, i've been talking to pam who's helped out a lot with it as well that um organize it by these plants and by the different you know by the different uh groups so how how martin crawford puts it together in his book if people are using that as a reference and this spreadsheet as a reference and then the the idea is the photo gallery will be organized in the same way so it all makes sense so that is the plan then i talked to uh, i talked to pam again actually oh, here we go it's so slow so i talked to pam about the different uh, you know different photographs and angles so this is a you know, this isn't finalized <laughs> But this is a list of things that we, uh, a list of different photographs of, that we can get. So we'll say, uh, I want to look up Bentham's Cornell. And uh, uh, it's, I want to see the whole tree and nothing but the tree or the whole, the whole plant. And then what it looks like if it's, if it's deciduous, if it's got no leaves on it, um, what it looks like in situ, in amongst other plants, how it is, what it's like if a seedling, its bark, its leaf flower fruit seed so you get the idea so it's kind of wide range and these are kind of suggestions of what the, the the photographs are for the different plants so 
what I'd like to do then, but that's a lot. That is an awful lot of plants to to uh, photographs to get. So it's 430 plants. Hold on, how many is that? That's 4,000, 3,480 different photographs. And that's a lot of photographs to collect and to get all that information together. That's really too much for to for one person or a couple of people. So this is a whole the whole point of this is to get some volunteers in and get people involved to collect this information. And uh, this is the start of the process. Uh, this this particular live stream to get people on board and to to do that. Uh, Right then, so uh, I wanted so I wanted to show you the the, the 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 forest garden, and then I wanted to go through the different st the different steps on how to do this. This is the problem I'm kind of coming up against is that I've got rid of all bah, I've got rid of all my notes. Forest garden Wales. gallery, right. Here we go. So, I've written instructions. My website's a bit rubbish, actually. It doesn't look it doesn't look all that, but it's got lots of good info on it. And I want, but I have written the instructions for how people can help. So there are two ways that people can help. Firstly, oh, I haven't been on the chat yet, so I'll go on the chat in a second. So, firstly, people can help by collecting the information, doing the research, and then secondly, people can help by getting the actual photographs and editing the photographs, resizing them, uploading them, adding the information to the to the gallery itself. So research on one side, editing on the other. Uh, so to do the research, you just need to have kind of real kind of fundamental, basic uh, internet skills. And then you need to be a little bit more advanced on the old image editing side to upload information. And then you need access to the, to the, to the image gallery and upload that information. So those are the two things. So research on one side and then editing on the other so this is where i'm going to open it up to the audience um which is <laughs> which is you out there okay um so right then uh name me a plant name me any plant i want i want plants in the chat i'm going to look up plants and i'm going to show you first thing we're going to be doing is researching so I want I want plants, please. I want you to. I'm gonna have a break while you put the plants in there. Type in a, a forest garden plant. Obviously, not some sort of random non-forest garden plant. But can you uh, can you put a forest garden plant in there? In the chat. Anybody? <laughs> Rosa Rigosa, Lynn. Thank you. Not Lynn. Sorry, Annette. <laughs> So Rosa Rigosa, I look up Rosa Rigosa. We they're sharp. They're sharp today. So I'll just I'll do a quick search on um, Rosa Rigosa here. So okay, Pam, Bam, Dogwood, Dogwood. Okay, uh, and uh, Rosa Rigosa. Ah, oh, Ramanas Rose. So. I just want to go through the different stages, and Pam's put on Dogwood, so I'll do Dogwood as well. Um, Yes, yes, it's all totally doable. So, um, Rosa Rigosa, there's a link here. If you can see, <laughs> if you can see down here, there's a link to uh, Plants for Future. Oopsie, not Sambucus. Ah, it's a bit, it's a bit annoying. Okay, there is a link here. So that's the link in the spreadsheet, Rosa Rigosa. So great. So we could actually go straight over to. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. No, oh, not Sambucus. So my my computer is so slow with all this streaming going on. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So Rosa goes. So you can look it up on Plants for a Future, and you go, yeah. What does it look like? And you, well, you know, you can see there's big hips on it, and there's a drawing, there's an illustration of some of the some of the flowers, which is nice. You know, don't get me wrong, it's good, and all the information there, and that information is basically summarised uh, down here. So you can see. Like all the the the, the different uh, attributes and everything, it's all summarised down there as well. Um, so what I want to do then is to say this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goji berry! Oh wow, they're all coming in thick and fast, thick thick and fast. French sorrel. How come Linz has come in before Pam's? That's crazy. So. 
Dan, what's going on is I want plant suggestions because I'm going to show people how to look for different plants on different image search engines. Uh, so what we're doing is putting together the forest garden gallery. So I'll go over here. So <laughs> what the uh, uh, I've got Rosa Ragosa as the as as a plant, and I want to say great. I've got it on the spreadsheet. I can check out the link on plants for a future. But what the hell does it look like? So this is what we're doing, Dan. Is to is to get examples of plants that I can look for. So I go to forest garden gallery. And you go, we plants. Now this hasn't been organised properly yet, but you get you get the idea. So there's a plants. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let me go back. So you've got plants, uh, which is all the plants listed. So the four hundred and thirty odd plants, they will be listed all in here by this in the same category as by the same category as the ones um, uh, in Martin Crawford's book. Plants by function, so this is just a little bit more detail, so you can find nitrogen fixers or wind breaks and stuff like that. So that'll be the plants by function, a separate uh, gallery. Gardens, into people, in, individuals' gardens, people's gardens. So, so a visitor can see examples of different gardens and then features, so like ponds and beds and polytunnels and that kind of thing. Uh, just so people get an idea of how actual features, paths, that kind of stuff how what they look like and how they how they work so plants is the one we're interested in so you would go into plants and you'd say uh it's not a canopy that's trees shrubs uh so we go into shrubs we and um oh <laughs> we haven't got well we haven't got rosa ragosa so what i will be doing and this is the this is the the my side uh the part, the, the stuff that I'll be doing is just to create the same album structure as as the structure for the the plants in creating a forest garden. So there will be one in there which will be I don't know what Rosa Rigosa will be under actually. For it's prob it might be less common fruiting shrubs because it's because of the hips. Can't remember. But anyway, whatever it is, I'll create it. And oh oh yeah, I'll I'll create it and then we'll add it. So what we're going to do is to look. This is the first part. So. If you're if you're volunteering for this, the first part to do is to do the research, and this is the research. So, I'll go to a Wikimedia Commons. Bless Wikipedia, they are brilliant. So, Wikimedia is the overarching body, um, and we're gonna look for Rosa Ragosa. Okay, and we're gonna put the information together. So. I want a photo of the whole plant, really. Let me see. No, not that. Not hey, that's. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look down here. Oh, the bloom. It doesn't really matter. This is just. Oh, there we go. Ka chunk, ka chunk. <laughs> Your chunk it's getting there it is downloading stuff oh my goodness me it's slow so so uh this is a rosa gosa so now what i am going to do is to say right oh oh man it's 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 choking oh dear it doesn't like that for some reason i thought it would be able to handle it never mind we'll um we'll we'll press on so this is, you, we found a picture of Rosa Ragosa. I'm just gonna go over to a, I haven't worked out how to do the to do the text, really. Uh-huh, oh dear, it's all gone very, very slow in here. Are you keeping up? Oh, I can't even type any text. Ah, oh dear. <laughs> Okay, that's um, it's crashed my computer. How exciting! I don't know if this is still going out. Am I still there? Recording kilobits per second. CPU is at thirty-five percent, forty percent. For some reason, Annette's Rosa Ragosa has crashed my web browser. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh no, it's still going. Right. Uh, okay, I'll just talk through. Uh, 
I'll just talk through the plant. So, um, gallery, gallery, gallery. Oh, my, my my text editor isn't even working. This is this is bad. So. Oh, good lord. Kachunk. <laughs> I just, I can't even got a text editor. So this is my text editor. So uh, I'll make a list of things. Wow, there we go. So I'll make a list of things. So I'll go, this is the title, Rosa Rigosa. This is... Hold on a second. I'm going to lose it if I leave it there. Oops. This is the link to the Plants for Future. So this is all the information that you have put down. Uh, description. Uh, great. Well, y you can kind of copy and paste it from Plants for Future or you can make it up a little bit. So you'd say, great. Uh, windbreak plant, windbreak plant, spiny, um, edible hips, and then the photo would be. Um, then you put in the 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 link to the actual photograph itself. Whoa! And then you click on oh, this, you click on the more details, and this is the this is the Wikimedia. So this is the actual page for that image. And you say, okay, that's the image that I want to use. And I'm going to put a photo in here and photo the alt text with, is going to be uh, open pink flower. Alt text is alternative text. And this is for screen readers and for when an image doesn't load properly, it shows, it gives a description of the image itself. And then the photo caption uh, would be I don't know pink, wide, uh, sing. Um, I don't know what to call them. Single, single, open. Um, pink uh, flower of Rosa Rugosa or something like that. Yep. And that's 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 the information that you use. So each photograph that you do so you'd add another photograph and then you just kind of have the link the alt text and a caption and then you've got this information up here is for the this information the information at the top is for the actual plant itself yeah and then i'll create an album for it and then copy and paste those details in into the <laughs> i copy and paste those details into the gallery so let's um Let's have a quick look at the other at the other image image um, libraries. I'll go through the the chatty chat things. Um... <laughs> okay. Um... Okay. Good. 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 Right. I'm gonna look up French sorrel. So the, another one that you can use is Flickr. So that's Wikimedia's one 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 website. Another one is uh, is is Flickr, so French Sorrel, and what we're doing because this is going to be, because this is going to be open to everybody. I want to get a uh, photo. I want to get photographs that have a an open license on them. So not somebody's work that there's a lot of photographs out on the internet, but you're not allowed to use it, all of them just for yourself. You've got to if you want to use them and share them, they have to have an open license. Now the website, sorry, this is another website that I meant to have up, which I haven't, but the website that it gives you an idea of the licensing is called Creative Commons, and that's uh, creativecommons.org. And we want to have all Creative Commons licenses, so all photographs licensed under Creative Commons license. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Some weird 3D stuff going on. And then, yeah, it says these are the photographs that you can use. So we're going to have uh, um, 
all of all the fo- all the photographs on the image gallery are going to be open I have an open license on them so when you're searching for the photographs it's really really important that they have a creative commons license um, I'm just going to grab any old um, doodah here this is a French sorrel and you can say way there we go and it's the same deal you know it's um, French sorrel well, let me get my come on then so I'll do exactly the same thing with every single plant there'd be one for French sorrel and it would have you know a description on it and then there'd be a link to the photograph blimey actually you don't you don't need all that the link to the photograph and an out description and a caption for it as well all right so that's the that's the kind of gist of it so that's French sorrel and uh, Lynn wanted to have goji berry oh lynn wanted oh she's got two that's not fair goji berry that's okay it's the last one so another one you can use is google images google images um is quite handy uh because it has under tools a a way of choosing images which have got a creative commons license Come on. Uh, there we go. Usage rights. So tools, usage rights, creative commons licenses. Okay. So there we go. We've got a horse called French Sorrel. And oh, wow, is that a French Sorrel flower? No way. So you can find Rumex acetosa, I think, isn't it? Is is that right for French sorrel? Let's pretend it is. Okay, Creative Commons, uh, and you'll find that it will kind of refer back to another to another website. So, oh, it's Common Sorrel, but you get the idea. So then you can go to another website and then check out the the licenses for it and download the image and and get the link. Um, I'll just show you actually. So there's a lot of stuff on them. There's a, there are a lot of uh, a lot of different websites out there with open source images on. So here we go. This is let, let's pretend that's French sorrel. Same thing. Um, I'll make another line for a photograph and I'll paste in that link and then put in the out text and put in a description. Uh, put in a caption and caption. Yep, so for each photograph, there's a link, alt text, and a caption. And then for each each plant, there's a, a link to the Plants for a Future website, and there is a description. Yep, so that's that's that. So that's the that one. Uh, we've got that. Cool. And then the last one I want to show you was Goji Berry. Um, and really, really nice website is Pixabay. So loads and loads of images you can have here. So goji berry lyceum bar okay lyceum barbarum i think barbarum barbarum if only i had a spreadsheet that i could search easily barbarum is that right so let me see lyceum barbarum cool Okay, and then search on Pixabay is a really, really good website. Lots and lots of open source. Oh, <laughs> Goji Berry, thanks. And sixteen free images. There we go. That's not a that's not a Goji Berry, is it? It looks like a rose. Well, maybe it is. I actually haven't seen a Goji Berry in real life, so it could well be. There we go. So you've got the dried goji berries and then same thing. So you cl click on an image <clears throat> and then you say, that's the photograph, take it back. You'd have a description and uh, a link to PFAF for goji berry, goji berry, cool. And then each individual photograph has the alt text and a caption. So there we go. That's, that's Wikimedia, Flickr, 
uh, Google and Pixabay. Those are the kind. Those are four four examples. <clears throat> now, once we've got this image, good, 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 good. Let okay, we'll go on to the next part. So that is doing the research. I must sort out. This is all kind of a work in progress. So what I will be doing is to sort out a place where we everyone can access a, a, a text file or a series of text files and uh, add add information to make it quick because emailing people isn't a very good idea i don't know well i'll have a think about it maybe through whatsapp don't know don't know i'll have a think i'll have a think about it okay so that's that's getting all the information together so for each each um plant there will be a a, a url and then a, a number of eight different photographs for each plant and that's this is the kind of format and you'll be copying and pasting that that text to the editor so this is what the editor does the editor goes great thank you rosa ragosa um let's we're going to resize the images so let's go and get the the image whoa that's super big <laughs> um we're going to resize the image now because there is limited file size limited disk space on the server that i'm using i'm going to be uh, i will be uh, I will be limiting the images to 1400 pixels, 1400 pixels wide. So every single photograph on the internet is defined by its pixels. So the maximum length, either that doesn't matter whether it's a portrait or a landscape, the maximum length is 1400 pixels, 1400 pixels. So I'm going to download this uh, file. And this is the last bit, by the way. Am I going to download it? Yes, I will download it. And then I'm going to open it. Okay, I'm going to have to open it in, a, in an image editor. And this is the, the image editor. There's, there's a fair few different image editors out there. Basically, Photoshop is the kind of thing that you want. I've got one called Pixelmator on the Mac. It doesn't really matter. There's not really, you might want to retouch it. If you're an experienced editor like Pam is, then you might want to uh, retouch, the, retouch the image. But to be honest, I'm just generally putting stuff up as it is because it's you know, other people can crop it. It doesn't really have much an effect on it. The important thing is just to resize the image to 1400 pixels. So I'll go to image. Oh, no, I won't. Yes, I will. Image, 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 image size. Yeah, so best thing you can do. There's a the, the Lynn's put a comment in the in the chat. Best thing to do, whoever the editor is, is to email rather than post photographs onto the WhatsApp group. The best thing is to actually put, put a email or somehow get this text information to the editor. Yep. So the researcher gives the information to the to the editor. We resize it to fourteen hundred pixels. We massive change in size. Save that, and then uh, the editor's next job is to add photographs. So um, I'm just going to quickly <laughs> go. Oh, go into shrubs sub albums. I'll create a new album. I'll just create one called. Um, oh, it should have the common name. I call it Japanese Rose. I'll create a new album. I should give it a description, you know, the 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 link to the plants for a future. So I'll I'll do that as well. And I'll just show you the whole kind of process. So Rosa Ragosa, that's the the link to it. So that's an AHREF tag for anyone who's interested. Rosa Ragosa. That's the site, that's the Latin name. I'll talk through this. This is just like really, really basic HTML, but anyone who wants to help out on the editing side can, I can talk through it. Great windbreak plant, spiny, edible hips. Save that. So I've created an album specifically for Rosa Ragosa, and then I want to add some photos and add photos. And and start upload. There we go. 
lovely so that's there now and whoops um rosa ragosa bloom rosa ragosa bloom's good author whoa uh oh that's sorry that's that's a detail i actually forgot to add to the list oh that's so stupid of me photo author um is Mary Hutchison. Mary Hutchison, thank you so much for taking a lovely photograph. That's very kind of you and sharing it with the world. So we then go to the gallery, uh, Mary Hutchison, creation date, that's cool. Linked albums, Japanese Rose album, thumbnail Japanese Rose. That's where the, the album thumbnail comes up. Um, that's good. And then Rose, we type in the Latin name here. And then we type in the other names, Japanese Rose and Ramanas Rose, I think it was. Add some keywords and then flower. And then I always like to add the color as well. So then people can search for different colors. Uh, and then the description, this is a description. The one that I made earlier, single pink flower of Rosa Ragosa. Nice and simple, nothing too fancy. Okay, we, we've done that. So now, if we if we go back to our shrubs folder, we've got a and a photo album for the Japanese rose, and there it is. There's the photograph. We it's up. It's there. It's brilliant. And now just have to do that three thousand four hundred and eighty times, and we will be done. So once we've done that, <laughs> the idea is that I can then use a spreadsheet to. Um, check off all the photographs that have been in so we we know we know where we're at so people aren't duplicating their duplicating the work okay rosa rigosa there and i'll say flower i've got a photograph of the flower it's in already come on there we go lovely so i've got a photo there's a photograph of the flower we've done that so we've only got seven more photographs of the rosa rigosa to go Okay, that's 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 the editing side. So a bit more technical, uh, still kind of fairly straightforward. I will be working on the workflow side of this. Okay, so that's 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 that. That's plenty, plenty for one day. So that's an awful lot of information to take in. Um, great. So I'm now going to hop over to uh, the Zoom chat. Let me get the links of the Zoom chat. So if you would like to help out, email me. Uh, it, hello at forestgarden.wales and or send me a message on the chat on Twitter Forest GDN Wales or via the Fa Forest Garden UK uh, Facebook group or via Facebook whatever email me if you're interested in helping out and I'll get everyone up to speed and we'll 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 add people to um, the WhatsApp group. Um, okay, so Zoom Zoom chat there and then the Zoom password. Here. That's the Zoom password is painting. Hey, lovely job. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope that was mildly interesting. And I hope that do spread the word, do get people who might be interested in helping out to help out. The more people I'm you know, if I can get ten people, that's only three hundred and <laughs> that's only three hundred and eighty photographs per person. So <laughs> uh, that'll be handy. Um but uh, yeah, it'll be good to get some, some help on this and then we can get a really, really good resource that everyone can share. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.